Hello everyone, in the past few videos we've been investigating the different lipid types that we find in the structural components that make up the surface of the plasma membrane, organelles, and even cargo vesicles throughout the cell. So throughout this video, let's discuss more about the overall properties of the lipid biolayers and how they function as a structural component for the cell and even influence transport in and out of the cell. One important factor that we have to remember is that the lipid membranes are not stone walls protecting the cells. Yes, these lipid bilayers are extremely important for the cells and organelles, protecting their contents from the external environment and allowing them to retain their energy producing processes locally. I do not want to diminish their functions of protection, yet lipid bilayers are also just as crucial with assisting with transport of important biochemical precursors, nutrients, byproducts and more, and none of it would be possible if the lipid bilayer was not semi-permeable, meaning that some materials can migrate through where others are limited. But before we dive deeper into the transport associated with membranes, let's first discuss how molecules move and behave, starting with Brownian motion, or the idea that molecules are randomly moving, colliding, and traveling in solution. So when we analyze a group of molecules, each one is going to have their own random motion and solution. Yet, where each individual motion of molecules is random, we can analyze net migration over time of molecules, such as diffusion. Diffusion is a property, which is a natural process, where molecules both the solvent and solute move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. For example, think about how food dye spreads in a cup of water starting from an area where the initial drop was of high concentration and spreading out into areas of lower concentration. So where Brownian motion analyzes the movement of individual molecules in solution, diffusion states that if permitted, which is a key word, molecules would travel from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration spontaneously. Back to that key phrase, if permitted, in the case of our lipid bilayers, we have a barrier that limits the migration of some materials from naturally diffusing in and out of the cell, which is the hydrocarbon tails within the bilayer that are hydrophobic, as we have analyzed before. Since the intersection of the membrane, the region that needs to be crossed is hydrophobic, molecules or ions that are polar, containing a charge, or even too large to pass through the lipids will be limited and prevented from diffusing through. Only small nonpolar molecules such as oxygen gas or CO2 can diffuse easily. Additionally, small polar molecules such as water and ethanol can diffuse in small small amounts just because of their size. This is where osmosis, an extension of diffusion, is truly important, since osmosis considers the semi-permeable membrane that allows the diffusion of the solvent and not the solute. Because the solute, for example salt, cannot pass through a given semi-permeable membrane, in our example, water will rush spontaneously to the side containing more salt, hence less water. And in an attempt to even out the concentration of solute on both sides of the membrane. So going back to our cell, even though some molecules cannot migrate, other molecules will respond to varying concentrations through osmosis. We have gotten ourselves into a little issue. We just discussed that large polar molecules, such as glucose for example, cannot diffuse through the membrane, yet cells need sugar to convert to ATP for energy. This is a great time to introduce another influential component in cell membranes that we will dive into more later, but as a really good introduction, protein complexes in the cell membrane assist in communication, transport, and dozens of other biochemical pathways. Yet throughout this video, I just want to focus on how they assist with cellular transport. Case for diffusing ions or polar molecules, we need to talk about a class of protein complexes called channels and carriers. Both of these protein structures transverse through the membrane to help with transport in different ways. No worries, these complexes respect the properties of membranes we have been discussing prior. Within the bilayer, the complexes are linked with hydrophobic amino acid residues that allow them to incorporate in the membrane structure. 
channels are complexes that create a channel that is lined with hydrophilic amino acid residues within the membrane to allow for transport through osmosis. This allows ions to flush in and out of the cell at really good rates, since each complex is designed to assist the migration of a specific ion. Whereas carrier proteins have enzymatic functions, changing conformation to migrate the molecule or ions they associate with across the membrane. In the case for this complex, we need to reset in order to transport again. So channels transport a little faster than carriers. If a channel or carrier complex moves molecules down their concentration gradient, like what we saw with diffusion, the transport is called passive transport because no added energetics is needed. But in some cases, cells have to transport in and out biochemical materials and molecules against their concentration gradient and against the natural flow of diffusion. This is called active transport. The only way a cell or a complex can perform this task is if they couple the movement of the molecule against their concentration gradient with something that is more thermodynamically favorable to compensate such as hydrolyzing ATP, coupling the process with other materials, or through the process of excitation and absorption through light. All these processes help push something against their concentration gradient. Throughout this video, we introduced the idea of protein complexes and membrane transport. I truly hope this video helped with your studies, and throughout the following videos, we're going to investigate more about proteins in the cell membrane, transport and how they actually work to assist in the biochemical pathways in the cell. I truly hope this video helped with your studies and best of luck.